welcome back to Creativers. As always, this is Kondrick, and uh, of course, as usual, we are back in my Let's Play world. <laughs> Stupid rockster. All right, so I've been uh, running around through the caves for a while, gathering obsidian, hunting monsters, and uh, I'm... I've got a decent amount of resources, finally. Now, I haven't gone back down to the corruption. I'll do that soon-ish, sometime. But uh, right now, I uh, I want to get started on some of the more technical stuff. I've been, I've been doing all this uh, getting started stuff, and it's, I mean, it's useful, it's interesting. But really, my play style is the technical stuff. Making farms, getting, uh, you know, just finding out how the game works and uh, I haven't really done much with that yet and I really want to so we're gonna try to see what we can do about that this episode um, oh I left my door open that's not good uh, as you can see I have rearranged things a little bit I moved all of these uh, forges down a little bit and I added the or I moved the ones in the floor down as well so that I can actually uh, get to both sets easily now one odd thing one really odd thing that doesn't make sense is there's an invisible block here and another one here and I um, oh did it it's gone finally yes okay what about this one can I get rid of this one no I can't okay well hopefully that one will disappear as well because it's really annoying uh, oh and um, in some of the chests that were down in the caves I found some more recipes or this recipe uh, it looks like the normal bed recipe plus some red pigment so now I can make a red bed woo uh, now I have pl uh, placed another teleporter in the world I also collected one of the ones from down in the caves and we're gonna actually go ahead and uh, let me grab uh, real quick, I think uh, mob drops. Here we go. I need one of those. And I believe I need some vines. I found a new location, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think we're going to be, uh, I think we're going to be moving fairly soon. Let's see here. All right, I think that's it. Yes, that is it. All right, so... I was out wandering around trying to get vines so I could make some more processors. And I found this location, which is pretty awesome. Check this out. We've got a giant elderwood tree right here. A very nice little lake. A nice big open clearing. And yeah, some vines I took off of that tree. But we also, there's one. There's two, and right on the other side over here, there's three. So there are at least three giant elderwood trees in this uh, g very small area. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is uh, maybe, because I think these two connect, I think I might end up making a, uh, a treetop. Uh, base or treetop house or something now obviously first first thing I'm gonna do is uh, uh, clear out a small base down at the bottom here uh, I can probably I think what I'll end up doing is flattening out uh, well probably I'll bring everything that's over here down to this level right here so I'm gonna have to flatten all this out shouldn't take too long now that we're up to uh, lumite though Ugh. let's see yeah that shouldn't be hard to do. I'll flatten it down. I'll have to remove some of these trees that are in the middle and in the way, clear it out a little bit. But I think that's going to be a lot of fun. So I'll probably be doing that in uh, in a future episode. It's not going to be happening uh, today, uh, most likely. But what I do want to do since I'm over here is, let's see, I do have, I have a couple more leafy leaves. That's good. And I have a couple more teleporters. Now, uh, let's see if I can find a couple more leafies because I'm going to start... I'm, I'm going to... In my practice world, I have green mushrooms or uh, glowing mushrooms as my uh, portal de teleporter designator. Uh, basically, what we've done 
uh, because I'm playing on a world, or I'm pr my practice world, my testing world, is I'm playing with my wife and my brother. We have a private world that we're just doing experiments on and things like that. Uh, what we've done to make it so that we don't overlap teleporter codes is, uh, let me go show you real quick, because I haven't shown teleporters yet on camera in this uh, series. Let me see, where did, did I get lost? I thought I got lost. Oh, there it is. All right. So the way teleporters work is if we look really close. Now, I did just put it. Yeah, whatever. Okay. So the way the portal teleporters work is you put one code in that is the code for the portal. So to get to this teleporter from any other teleporter, you would set the teleports to as the code of this teleporter. And as you can see, it, you can change it. And then the teleports to tells you where it goes. So let's say I put this teleporter right here. This one is leafy vine vine and teleports to three leafies. Uh, well, if I go ahead and set this to leafy vine vine as well, then there's a 50 50 chance that the portal back at my base that is three leafy will either go to this one or that one. It's uh, it's kind of whoop, it's kind of random. So you can have multiple portals with the same code or, or the same destination or whatever. So what I will eventually end up doing, hopefully not too, too far in the future, is I want to create a teleporter, a, a portal nexus of sorts, where it'll be a big room that has just a, an array of teleporters and every one of the teleporters will go to a different location and then at that different location the other end teleporters will all go back to a single teleporter in the middle of the portal room uh but yeah so that's that's the thought anyway what i was doing over here is i found let's see we're going straight this way i believe if we look up this way, there you go, you can see it. There's a mountain with snow and ice on top of it. And I think I have found a perfect location for some farms. And it, like, I want my nice base to be over there. And then my, uh, my lab or my experimental area will probably be up on top of this mountain if I can get up here without too much difficulty. Yay. All right. Um, go like this, and then that, and get up here. Here we go. All right. So, yeah, lots of snow. There's some ice. And this area right here, down in the middle, looks like a perfect place for some sort of evil lair, secret lab. Well, not so secret, but... Yeah, so I think I'm going to clear out this area in the middle of this mountain here to make a lab. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to have a few different projects going at the, uh, at the same time. So that that way, if I get bored with one project or burned out on one project, I can just switch to another project temporarily um, to keep myself... Uh, keep myself going, keep myself from burning out on the game, because I really don't want to burn out on this game. This, this game is gorgeous, and it's a lot of fun. Ow. And, um, and I really want to be playing it for a long time. So, there's that. Let's see. I have seven ice now. Okay, I need more. Uh, what I want to do this episode, though, uh, probably only going to do one or two small projects, nothing major. But what I want to do is I want to make an ice farm because I, ooh, after I get this keeper, finally, a keeper that I can hunt on camera. Where is it? Where, oh, I hear, oh, there it is. Come here, keeper. I need more arc stones. Got him. And that is the beauty of the Lumite sword. So, um, let's see, let me grab some more ice. And then uh, we'll head back to the starter base, um, which is what it is now, because I found a better place for uh, something that is not going to be a starter base. But let me get some more ice. We'll head back to base. And then I'm going to set up an ice farm. 
and uh, I'll have to set up a new one once I finally start moving everything over. But for now, we'll keep working at the starter base until I figure out exactly what I want to do um, with the new location. So I'm going to grab some more ice and I will see you back at the main base or at the starter base. See you in a second. All right. And I am back. I gathered a bunch of snow and a handful of ice. And I also cleared out a room here for the ice farm to go in. Um, and then I forgot how to make it. So I went and I did some testing in my practice world. And I realized that it's a lot easier than I thought it was. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to fill this in because I don't need this. Um, it's, it's much, much easier than I thought. So what we're going to do to make this ice farm is you need basically a... Um, a three by three area well what you need the simplest answer let me go ahead I'm going to put some let's see snow let me put the snow down because snow takes uh, snow takes longer to melt or maybe not um, whoop. all right I hope this is visible I hope this is easy to see all right we'll go like this so we need snow. We'll go ahead and we'll make a three by three of snow. Oh, come on. We can do this. Uh, it, it is a little difficult to get the snow or ice in place without it melting. It takes a little bit of speed, basically. Um, but once it's in place, you're good, um, good to go. And here we go. I, I'm not explaining this very well, uh, but I did my... Now, originally, I thought you needed a much larger area, and you really don't. Uh, my brother showed me his design. Um, he is not recording at the moment, but he will be back on YouTube uh, once he gets done with some other things that he's been working on. Uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, he said I did not need to link to his channel or anything like that because he hasn't been very active. But, uh, yeah, so this design is based on the design my brother showed me, but I've made some slight modifications. Uh, his design needed ice on all the sides. I just recent, just now discovered that as long as you've got the one side, all you need is this. Just a 3x3 three three of ice, right like this. And then what you can do is if you take this bedrock right like this well actually I don't even need all that snow but um, let me let's see torch so you can see uh, so you've got a three by three wall of ice right here this center block is where the ice generation will happen uh, so you do not want to remove this top ice block or the other ice will melt uh, that's probably part of why he has it wider but, um, uh, or why my brother came up with a wider design, but all we really need to do now is we'll put some bedrock right here. We'll put a block of ice right there that will melt and it will flow down right to here. And now I have infinite ice, free ice generation. Now it's still a little slow, but, uh, that's mostly block updates that are the problem. But now I have an infinite ice farm, which is really easy to use. And all I have to do is I can go ahead and I'll fill in right around here, fill this all back in with the bedrock. And, uh, there we go. Now that's a little dark right now, but, uh, the main concern is to be very careful not to remove this top ice block or the ice on on the uh, on the sides will melt. Ooh, I didn't realize there was a cold node there. There we go. Okay, so um, let's see what else. I know this is probably a little shorter episode, but I uh, I have a lot of mining I still have to do before I can get more stuff done. Um, but yeah, so really easy, basic ice farm. Oh, careful not to remove the ice basic ice farm I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to style this up a little bit clean it up uh, continue the wall out and things like that uh, but what I did want to show you is off-camera between episodes I crafted 
architect chest, grand architect chest, some ladders, and a sign. And what I did with the ladders and the sign is I made this little spot right here. Um, I hear... I hear... Eh, whatever. I thought I heard something I could attack, but I don't see them anywhere. Are they out here? Eh, whatever. Oh, I hear him. Ah, there he is. Lumite stuff is wonderful. All right. So I am really getting distracted now. Uh, let's see here. So I decided that what I'm going to do is if I have to craft something off camera between episodes that I haven't already crafted, uh, so new recipe or something like that, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll put it in this chest real quick uh, or between I'll, I'll put it in the chest so that I can show at the beginning of the episode or sometime during the episode what I've done. Um, now I also finished my uh, Lumi armor uh, between episodes just because I wanted to get it done and I really need to make a healing beacon so let me check again real quick see what a healing beacon requires. Uh, come on little lag, obsidian slab, corruption dust, stalactite, and iron rods. Well, I am going to probably craft that off camera as well. I do have the iron rods. I do have obsidian. Um, actually, I might have everything that I need. Oops, stalactite's right here. All right. And corruption dust, which is right here. Is that enough? Or do I need... I need two more obsidian slabs. Okay, I am going to really, really quick just craft a couple obsidian slabs. Oh, this way. We'll just make a couple obsidian slabs really quick. Uh, 30 seconds on that, and in fact, I'm going to go ahead and spread this out a little bit because I, I want a lot of healing beacons. I want to be able to go down to the corruption layer and uh, drop a healing beacon and as it's working, drop another one at the edge of where it's going to spread and things like that. Uh, now, you can actually get along fairly well with just a single healing beacon because as soon as you place it down, you can pick it right back up and it will still continue to heal. Okay, this, this one's done already. We'll go ahead and that. Grab that. Uh, healing beacon. We can make one. All right, so tell you what, let's let's go down to the corruption level real quick. I'll show you how this works. That was weird. Uh, we'll go down to the corruption level real quick. Let me uh, throw away the cold stuff here. Um, that chest, that'll work. And ice, and we'll run down to corruption. And I'll show you how this works down there. And I'll leave my door open because monsters are going to be chasing me down this way they're not going to be bothered about my base but uh yes so i need to between episodes i need to go hunting in corruption layer get a lot more corruption dust hunt down some monsters um so that i can continue moving forward but so here's here's how the healing beacon works you place it down you pick it right back up and even though you've already picked it up the healing continues to spread, and ooh, let's 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 get this guy. Here we go, and corruption dust, awesome. But as you can see, there's uh, it's basically a five block radius. So one, two, three, four, five. Yep, a uh, five block radius, which would be nine block total, nine by nine area, that is healed by the healing beacon. Now, as you can see, some of the corrupted stone has turned corrupted again, and that is because of this corrupted uh, water right here. So if we throw that down, pick it right back up again, that should take care of another good size section. Actually, you can see that the corrupted water is re-corrupting things. Uh, the corrupted water will re-corrupt anything it touches, and uh, the corrupted trees will occasionally spread back to the to any tree material they touch that it won't uh, it won't spread to the stone but it will spread to the leaves and other uh, cragwood but yeah so there's that I'm going to between episodes try to hunt down some more lumite because I really need more lumite 
And I, I may actually start moving stuff over to the new forest base area. Uh, or at least some of it. I'm not sure yet. Uh, we'll figure that out. But I think next episode... Actually, here. Here's the question. For my viewers... What, what kind of farm do you want me to do next episode? Uh, because I will probably try to, for the next few episodes, try to start working on making some different kinds of farms. You want to see a mob farm? You want to see a flower farm? A honey farm? Well, beeswax, honey, whatever. Uh, what kind of... What kind of game mechanics do you want me to investigate and... Uh, and uh, build or I guess exploit is not exactly the right word, but, uh, what kind of game mechanics do you want me to play with next episode? Uh, I guess let me know in the comments and I will do my best to, uh, if, if I don't already know how to use whatever me mechanic you want to find out about, if I don't already know how to do it, let me know, and I will research it, and I will get back to you with information about it. Uh, I, I want to, I want to try to make this series as viewer-oriented as possible, um, while keeping it scientific and keeping it, of course, interesting to me, because if it's not interesting to me, it's not going to be interesting to you. So, there's that. Um, hopefully uh yeah anyway i think that's gonna be it for this episode it looks like it's gonna be about 20 25 minutes that's not bad uh but yeah so as always this has been Condrick. i uh <laughs> wow my brain just went wherever it went all right as always this has been Condrick. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. Let me know. It means a lot to me. It doesn't help necessarily get more views, but it does help keep me motivated to keep producing content. Ah, there we go. That's what I wanted to show. The corrupted mobs most of the time will drop multiple of these purple potions, which are or the, the small potions, which are pretty awesome. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time. And have a great day.